right <coughs> comprehension type so question number one uh a an equilibrium is established between reactants and products in a vessel of actually are these questions no uh each comprehension has different ordering oh that's bad so you have to write like this a and then in that one <laughs> fine uh equilibrium is established between reactants and products in a vessel of capacity three liter at uh at like temperature t kelvin the equilibrium mixture contains solid fe water vapor solid feo4 and hydrogen gas and this reaction okay it is also that the rate of constant of the forward reaction is 10 times the rate of constant back reverse reaction yeah well that means like for for equilibrium you would want the reactants like activity of reactants to be uh, 10 times more than activity of products so basically kc is 4 or k is 4 if you will right energy diagram for this reaction is shown in the figure right in right side in terms of activation energy of forward and reverse reaction so okay fine the equilibrium amount of h2o is something times that of h2 oh okay so yeah like concentration of h2 upon concentration of h2o that thing to the power of four that is our equilibrium constant which is a uh, which is 10 so it's going to be 10 to the power of negative sorry 10 to the power of uh one upon four that is concentration of h2 upon concentration of h2o uh so you want concentration of h2o is more how many times more that of h2 that's 10 power negative 1 upon 5 sorry negative 1 upon 4 so 10 power negative 0 0.25 that's c so 1 c so 2 what will be the standard free energy change at temperature 127 degrees celsius so you know what the uh, what the reaction you know the equilibrium constant so you can figure out that as well so delta g is just negative rt standard of course negative rt natural log k this will be negative. What's the temperature? 127 degrees Celsius. That's like 400 Kelvin. So negative 8.3 or 2, whatever, into 400 into natural log K. Um, natural log of 10. That's like 2.3 something. It's 2.303. I know, but uh, approximation. Okay. So this will be negative 882 into. Uh, yeah, that should be the thing, right? Fine. So that times. <clears throat> 4 that times 23 so 82 times 4 that is negative uh what is this 32 and so 328 that times 23 let me go 23 uh so 421 7 is that key delta g value Okay, that's not there, but approximately that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be around that and negative, of course. So negative seven six five seven looks good enough. Yeah, because it's close to seven five, and of course this is supposed to be two point three oh three, and maybe this is two, maybe this is eight point three because it's like eight point two something front, and so it could be bigger than that. That's why seven six five seven. So A is correct, right? Uh, sec, uh, third reaction. third question. Okay, addition of inert gas at constant pressure on the given reaction. So look at that. It doesn't affect anything. Neither does changing the pressure or changing the volume or whatever, right? Now it has no effect on the equilibrium mixture. So C fourth okay if the volume of the vessel becomes double then nothing will happen what's the big deal more h2 will be was oh yeah so uh, if the volume becomes double then it should have the yeah like there's actually no problem with it becoming double right as long as these things h2 and h2 are in a particular ratio it's, it's okay so okay c is just wrong d is very correct uh more h2 will produce i don't know i don't think it will change in fact so d 
fourth D. I mean, it might change. But actually, it won't. Because if, if it has to change, then H2 has to decrease. So it will change the whole reaction portion. That's not good. So it won't change. I thought it was somehow related with solids, but it's not. Okay. Question so 5. Equilibrium constant Kc or Kp increases with increase in temperature. Okay, so delta H for this thing. So reactants to product energy decreases. That means it's an exothermic reaction. So increasing temperature will decrease this uh, equilibrium constant. So it decreases uh, with temperature. Oh, so it increases with decrease in temperature, of course. Because, yeah, it's exothermic. So fifth B. Yes, for B. Question number six. There is six. No, there's directly B. So second comprehension. Okay, there is a there is an appreciable change in the value of equilibrium constant with respect to temperature. It can be determined by the Van Hoff equation where delta is enthalpy of okay, okay, okay. It has been found that the enthalpy change does not vary much with change in partial pressure of PX. Okay, yeah, okay. This in the new form of equation can be integrated. Uh, yeah, equation. Actually, this equation also just needs delta H and delta S to be constant. So it's kind of circular thing saying that delta H is like not changing. But oh, yeah, actually, it was with uh, it's not changing much with temperature. And that's why you could have delta H being constant in this equation. But it doesn't change with pressure as well. Oh, of course. Yeah. New form of uh, equation is integrated. An equation of straight line is obtained between log Kp and 1 upon T, uh, where T is the temperature at which constant Kp exists. What? Straight line between log Kp, so this thing, and 1 upon T, of course. So it's just a linear line, yes. So what about it? Oh, so this is the graph. Line one, line two. So you want to write Kp, uh, log Kp in terms of one upon P. So yeah, it's like what? Log of Kp. Log of K is log of A. A is like the pre exponential factor, right? <clears throat> uh, but it's like it's different actually. Okay, wait. So this is going to be delta H in. Yeah, so negative is going to be there, like negative delta h upon rt. So it's going to be 2. Right, when you integrate that, it's going to happen. So this will be negative delta h upon rt. So this is uh, this is when you have temperature equal to delta. Yes, that's how it's going to be. All right, cool. So let's look at this. For line 1, the slope is positive. That means, like, what if it's write it as delta h upon r? Times one upon t. So for the slope being positive, your delta h must be negative. So line one has delta h negative, uh, and then line two has delta h positive. Line one has this uh, negative x, sorry, negative y intercept. Y intercept is basically like when one by t becomes zero, basically, then you just have k equal to a. So log k equal to log a. So this being negative, that just means this a thing is uh, less than one. This is positive, that means A is bigger than 1. Enthalpy change, delta H is positive, which requires, which represents the, uh, so delta H positive that represents line 2, right? Yeah, because this slope will be then positive. So, uh, B, second, put this down a bit. Okay, second, uh, for the exothermic reaction, decrease with, okay, Kp decreases with. What? This is unrelated to the graph anyway. <laughs> okay, exothermic reaction. Uh, yeah, Kp decreases with dec uh, decreases. Okay, that's like increase in temperature that will decrease Kp. Uh, so B is the thing. Like can't be both A and B simultaneous, right? So B. Second B. Third E. A F. Okay, activation energy of forward reaction. Right, where's that graph once again? Okay, that's uh, the call. Fine. EF is the activation energy of the forward reaction, that's the activation energy of the reverse reaction according to line one. So you know that 
the EA minus E backwards. Like if you have this graph, for example, you got this is the transition state, this is like that. So this whole thing is EA, this thing, whole thing is EF. So EA minus EF, uh, yeah, that thing represents delta H because as you can see over here, it's negative and EA also has that EF, so it works, right? So yeah, or you could have said that negative EF, which is like this vectorial thing, minus negative EA is equal to delta H, that also works. Anyway, so what do you want? Uh, EF is the equation of forward direction, then equation of the reverse direction according to line 1. So for line 1, delta H is negative, right? So delta H being negative, that just means uh, EA is less than EF. Right. So it's less than E. Wait, what? E R. Uh, it should be like energy forward and this is equation reverse and that should be the correct thing okay so eaf is less than eaar and that means eaar is bigger than eaf so that is uh, c third c fourth equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure k okay partial pressure kp huh? and in terms of concentration oh, okay fine so kp is in terms of partial pressure and kc is in terms of concentration are related to each other by the relations this is not related to graph though. Kp equal to Kc times. Okay, this is wrong. Uh, this is also wrong. What is this? Log Rt. Okay, so that Kp upon Kc is uh, Rt to the power of n. That's what they are saying basically. Yeah, that's the, that's very correct. So C is correct. And uh, B is um, wrong. So C is the way to go. Fourth C. Fifth, uh, three equilibria are established uh, separately in three different closed containers at zero degree Celsius, and the equilibrium constant is what is. So now we are going to C. So one. The three equilibria, these three equilibria. Established separately in three different closed containers such as be Celsius and their equilibrium constants are given. Okay. Right. The vapor pressure of water at zero degree Celsius is uh, this much. Fine. Okay. Wait, H2O solid. Oh, this thing. Oh, it's like hydrogen something. And then this gives this plus H2O. Okay, cool. Then this gives. Okay, if E1, P2, P3 are the pressures of the water vapor in container 1, 2, 3, respectively, at equilibrium, then. So, yeah, like only gas is over here, and only gas is over there, and only gas is over there. So, this will be the fourth root of this guy. That is what the pressure of H2O will be. The fourth root of 1.6 to 10 power negative 11. That's like 16 into 10 power negative 12 so this will be so let's just do this thing for one the pressure of h2o is uh at equilibrium that will be 2 into because 2 power 4 is 16 so 2 into 10 power negative 3 uh so for 2 pressure is so it's gonna be what it's gonna be the fifth root of this thing so 243 that is the fifth root of 3 so 2 243 into 10 power negative 15, so it's like 3 into 10 power negative 5. And third, P is what's this? The 10th root of this. Oh, so it's like 1. Very nice. It's just 10 power negative 2. Ooh. 1 into 10 power negative 2. Right. So the biggest value is, of course, this thing. Because this thing is 0 0.3. This thing is like 0, 0.0 something. Yeah, 0 0.03. No, 0 0.003 equal to n power negative 2. So this is the biggest value. Right, so you have P3 is bigger than uh, P1 is bigger than P2. Where is it? P3 bigger than P1 is... Okay, yeah, so C is correct. Uh, no. Right, so C. Question number 1, C. Second. 
what is the most effective drying agent okay so how does the drying agent work it it gets water from the atmosphere into itself so yeah the the more vapor pressure of water is like wait 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 for drying what must happen is that the vapor pressure of uh water in atmosphere must be less than what it normally is so that the surfaces that are wet will if they are like give away their water and that will dry the thing right that's how drying agents work uh and that means we want the vapor pressure of atmosphere to be less the uh, less is better right and over here you have the vapor pressures directly oh yeah cool and that means the least vapor pressure which is a uh, for P2, right? So P2 gives the least vapor pressure. Yeah, that's that's the best thing. That's the best drying agent. And second is basically just any HPO4.12 H2O, right? Wait, what? That's not there. Okay, this is not something that should happen. What are these things? NA2SO4. That's this guy. Okay, okay. So it's these that. Okay. I mean, these would be wetting agents in that case. These would be drying agents. Right. So, once again, in equilibrium, your pressure must be the least. Right. So, if in, if in like less vapor pressure, also uh, your drying agent works, then that's a good thing, right? It can dry to a larger extent. Yeah. Right, and that means your your uh, pressure. That that we have the largest one is actually the best because look at this P three. It has ten power negative two. It's a very big quantity. So that means even if your what am I saying? If it's less than that, if it's less than that, it will try to increase it. Oh, that's not good. That, that's not good because if it's less than this pressure it will try to uh, not do anything basically right but if it's more than that it will try to decrease so actually no less is the best still less is the best right the least the pressure is the better will it be yes yes that's how it should be and that is once again just uh just p2 because not the best one so p2 uh and that is any hp of four or something so yeah like you can't say that this itself is a drying agent this equilibria that is actually the thing that dries so and because these are both solids if you put both of them together it, it still works as a drying agent because yeah not as a wetting agent so right p2 uh sorry two so that's any hp of four dot seven h2o that's b i think Okay, let's go for third. Uh, the relative humidity is with okay, any two SO four be effervescent when exposed to air at. Okay, so you just uh, let this guy any two SO four do its thing. So it's like in a container or something, and then just let it do its thing, and it will get humid, right? Your pressure will be just third one, so that's that's this guy. It will be ten power negative two, and ten power negative two atmosphere. Well, that's not. No. What is one tor? I think one tor is a hundred, one hundred of atmosphere, right? Whatever. So it's like zero point one five two instead of that. It's it's zero point zero one. Uh, basically this thing is just one tor that's what they are saying so one upon 15.2 that is the fraction of humidity and that is 100 upon 15.2 percent right so 100 upon 15.2 right that, let's go for uh you can't go for nine you can't go for it will fall 7, 7 and 35. It's close enough to 7 and 5. Yeah, directly. So why even do this division? Close enough to 7, that works. Right. 
735 is like 10.064 works cool so 70 closest to 70 that's like 60 percent fine closest to 60 but 6 that would be 6 9 91.2 okay fine so 60 percent third is uh b shouldn't it be 70 percent it's closer to that fourth okay at what little humidities will this be delinquent i absorb moisture wait what does effervescent and delicant mean okay so maybe like if delicant is absorbing moisture then effervescent probably means like it's it's dry it it oh oh god no then right no effervescent is something that gives moisture into the surrounding right so it's like wet basically and that's good so yeah 60 percent should probably be the same at 60 percent it will be giving off water <sighs> i think so i don't know actually like how would we do this whatever at what humidities uh this guy will be delinquent that is it will absorb moisture that's possible so about 60 percent about actually 70 percent right it should obviously be about 50 percent so a and I did it correctly, right? Because Na2SO4, that is the third one. And third has pressure of this thing. And 15.2 torr. Like, this is actually probably one torr. And yeah, that's this much of percentage for equilibrium. And that's like close to 70%, something. No, wait, not 70%. Uh oh. 7%. Oh no. Oh no. Something's going wrong. What is a tor? What is a tor? Seriously. <sighs> okay. Total pressure of water at 0 degrees Celsius is 15.2 tor. And this thing is in atmosphere. 10 pound 82. Maybe it's like a tor is. 10 power degree 3 atmospheres who knows is that what okay i don't know so we can't go for this question number three and four we don't know oh there was question five as well so we'll just put a question mark next to it question number five if the volume of containers are same then the molar ratio of water vapor in container one two three four is Molar ratio, that's the same thing as the pressure ratio, right? So the ones are the same. So just this is to that is that. So this will be, can get rid of that 10 power negative 5. So this will be 200 is to 3 is to, oh wow, this is like 1000. Vapor pressure, it's not these of course. How are these the way to go now how can that be no second points okay so now something's just going wrong second guy what was it <laughs> come on what solution of special of h2 is about five that's this thing so that's 10 pound eight is three that's wrong this took 10 point eight three. Okay, that is how it should have been. <sighs> well, still, three is the biggest. Then you have second. Oh no, everything went wrong now. That should have been 10 point eight three. So uh, this is P two, and this is bigger than P one. So all of this is just wrong. Let's start once again. So first, uh, okay, so P three is bigger than P two. So it's A. Second, which is the most effective drying agent? So the less less is the best. So uh, third, which is Na2SO4, I think. 
Yeah. Okay. Third. Uh, let me this at which I need to ask. So, okay, this guy will be. And that's P3, okay. Once again, it didn't change, so it's just it's still the same thing, I guess. Right, you one is wait. What? Why did I say? Why did I say A? The least is the best. So P one. That that's gonna be for the first guy. First guy is S R C L two dot two H two O. So it's C actually. Okay, third. Uh, once again, I don't know what third fourth are because what is a tor? Is this like zero point one maybe? So it's like zero point. Could it be that Hausen tor is one atmosphere? Then this thing is. It's an atmosphere, so it's like. Oh wow, a thousand. So ten. Ten tor. Upon fifteen point two tor. Yeah, that's more like it. And that times hundreds, like thousand. And this is in fact approximately seventy percent, right? So the relative humidity is at which this guy will be effervescent when exposed to air. That means like it will give away its water, I think. So uh, that will be everything less than that. So thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. All of this works actually. Why would we? What's going wrong? What am I doing wrong exactly? Relative humidity is just this thing for sure. Where am I going wrong? This time seven. That's seven thirty-five and stuff. And yeah, so it's seventy. Seventy percent. That would be working. All of these actually. So should I just go for A B C D like directly? Maybe fourth. Hey, wait. Uh, when you say the most effective, like, do you also take in account uh of like these stoichiometric coefficients that you are getting ten of these in each mole of that? No, no, that's not what I mean by effective. I think. Okay. So fourth at Water relative humidity will this guy will be delicate absorb moisture and exposed to air. So below fifty degrees, actually like below. Uh, yeah, also like above fifty degrees. So, so, so yeah, fifty percent. There will be some quantities above. So yeah, A, B, C, all of them. I don't know. Is this a multiple choice one, or am I just going wrong somewhere? If the volume of container be same, then the Molar ratio of water vapor in container one, two, three, respectively is. In fact, it should also be D in that case. Who knows? If the volume of the container be same, then the molar ratio of the water vapor in containers one, two, three, respectively is. So yeah, it's just this is to that is that. And taking the ten power negative three, multiplying by that, this will be. Uh, two is to three is to ten. Which, okay, which is like zero point two is to zero point three is to one, so it's D. Sixth, oh, that's not sixth. So let's go. Okay, for a gaseous reaction, what what's the time right now? Whatever. For the gaseous reaction, uh, it will be constant K P C K P K X. What? Are represented by the following relations. On the basis of the above work of select the select or right. Okay, select right option. Right. R I G T. Fine. Uh. K X is in mole fractions. Okay. Fine. So K P is K C times R D power delta N P S. Yes, of course, that's obvious. Uh, B and D are actually also like having the same relation, so okay. What? K C is K X times P delta N gases. Now well, that can't be, but it will have pressure and stuff over there. That's not correct because this by unit analysis you will see this is not correct. 
so no and kx is kp times rp power delta and guess this uh no 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 that's not that's not the way to work like pv equal to rp so mm -hmm. no way uh for these guys kp is kx times delta p to yes so b might be correct yes i think b is correct okay and d is incorrect okay so b is the way to go second for the reaction SOCL2 gives something something okay kp is bigger than kx is obtained at so your del what was the thing once again you this was like p delta n gaseous right so delta n gaseous over here is just it's just one so your p thing must be bigger than one so at two atmosphere for the following equilibrium relation between kc and kx in terms of mole fraction is so here delta n is a negative one that means kc is kx no that's not right rt upon p yeah that's the molar volume because p v equal to another so rt upon p is molar volume right this but to the power of negative one so it should be actually p upon rt right that would be uh, n upon p now wait wait this is kp that's not good uh, wait a second you want uh n upon b so like you don't want the molar volume you want the reciprocal of molar volumes over there and that's why actually yeah rt upon p that will be n upon no that will be b upon it. p upon rt is n upon b which is which is what we want so p upon rt is part of negative one that's rt upon p so yeah uh c is right fourth so there's no fourth fine let's go for e okay variation of equilibrium constant k with temperature is given by van't of equation from this equation delta can be equal to equal. okay 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 for uh isothermal gas metallization temperature dependency of equilibrium constant is given by this thing value of delta s of the reaction at 200 kelvin hey so you just got that uh, previously as well right so yeah, yeah you you know that uh natural log k is just negative delta g upon rt and that's equal to so that's natural log k right and that's equal to uh it's like natural log a minus delta h upon rt so this thing yeah there we go this thing is uh, right now it's two so two times rt that's what we are looking for exactly no wait uh what you want you want you you want delta h minus delta g upon t uh, okay so it's like this. that would be natural log a times r so that will be two times r so two r is delta s reaction okay. that's nice so first a second Select the correct statement. Value of k equivalent k uh, equilibrium always increases with increasing temperature. No, not always. For exothermic reaction, value of this thing increases with decreasing in temperature. Yes, uh, endothermic reactions increase with decreasing temperature. No. For exothermic reactions, slope is log k versus okay slope of log k versus one upon t uh that is negative so it's for exothermic your delta is negative actually so now it's gonna be positive yeah because natural log k equal to natural log a minus delta h upon rt so delta h upon r that must be that must be positive for this to be negative which doesn't make sense if it's exothermic so no b is wrong and b is correct right so second b third uh variation of log k log base 10 k with 1 upon t is shown by the following graph in which straight line is at 45 degrees sorry uh, 45 degree celsius oh okay so this is the temperature and this is also 45 degree so don't get confused with that this thing is the temperature that is the angle hence delta h is okay 
right so this is for the temperature 45 degrees celsius but then wait how can that be because it's the variation with temperature what is this then uh yeah like hmm. it just means the angle probably but they put this celsius for no reason so it's 45 degrees yeah so slope is like one and that means <sighs> negative delta h upon r that thing is one so delta h is negative r and what is negative r it's negative wait what that's not what it's not correct not in jupiter rules wait log base 10 of k okay okay that's different then because this will be 2.3 or 3r so delta h will be right because natural log of k that will be log base 10 of k upon log base 10 of e and that will be like log base 10 of k times natural log of uh, natural log of 10 and that goes on denominator and that's actually 2.3 or 3 something so yeah uh 2.303 times 8.3 that will be like i think b is the way to go this is our negative so b fourth the equilibrium constant kp for this reaction is 1 at 26 7 degrees celsius and 4 at 47 degrees celsius for the reaction enthalpy change oh so for the reverse reaction enthalpy change okay so kp is 1 at 47 and 4 at sorry 1 at 27 and 4 at 47 degrees celsius okay fine so the same thing like natural log of 2 k2 that is 4 upon 1 that is negative delta h upon r 1 upon t2 so 1 upon 320 minus 1 upon 300 which is okay so this is gonna be like delta h upon r 1 upon 300 minus 1 upon 320 which is approximately 20 upon 300 squared yeah so natural log of so what, what's delta h delta h is r natural log 4 times 300 squared upon 20 which is what's this gonna be uh it's like 9 to 10 power 4 so 9 r natural log 4 into 10 power 4 upon hey put that 2 inside of it and make this 2 and uh this is gonna be 10 power 3 because there's a 10 over it right this is like 9 r natural log 2 it's like 6 point something so 0 0.3 times 2.3 that that would be 0 0.69 something yeah i'm gonna take this like as 0 0.7 for approximation and that times 10 power 3 so this is 9 plus 7 which is 63 63 sorry 6.3 and then that times that so you get 63 r into 10 power 2 yeah and what is r r is just 8.3 for example it could also be 8.2 actually so 16 times 8 point what 2 i think in fact, instead of writing like that, write it directly as 82 times 63 and then make this a 1. Right. And that will be, what is this? So 5166, and we got 1, which is like 51660. Okay. Is that there? Oh, so you want kilo one two three that's like five one point six six something that is close to this thing it's positive also so uh this should work c sorry, oh, sorry d fourth d that's it comprehension type done i mean these kind of questions are the one that i don't like to do because assertion reason sometimes uh, reasoning is not applicable there but whatever. Okay, so first of all, match the coil. CaCO3 solid to CO is okay. Uh, okay, so RT to the power of something. Right, so here red time dashes is 1. So, okay, above room temperature and stuff. And that means RT is positive. Sorry, RT is bigger than 1. That's what I should say. 
So yeah, like KP is bigger than KC for A. Okay, so first, uh, A goes to. So for this guy, KP is bigger than KC. Like A is P, B goes to. Wait, what? One or more than one entries of column or. Okay, 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 okay. This is not good. Uh, KP and KC not defined. Uh, these are defined for the first guy. Second guy, monoxide plus Cl2 plus Cl2. Uh, yeah, so delta N is negative. That means KP is less than KC. So B goes to R. C. Over here as well, the same thing. No, wait. Okay, so it's not. Yeah, like these are not defined because there's only one equilibrium constant that we have to deal with. KP, KC are the same thing. Wait, you know what? You could say KP equal to KC because, yeah, so. But it, it could also be like KP, KC not defined. So, yeah, we don't know. For B, that's weird because this is aqueous phase, this is gaseous. So, yeah, here KP, KC are not defined. It doesn't make sense because in aqueous phase there is also some activity right which you cannot just ignore you can't just say oh my god like this is a liquid and this is a gas so i will ignore this no aqueous phase also has variable activity so you have to take that in account as well okay second uh o2 gives so o3 okay oh so you want units fine right so of KP, of course, right? So KP, like at pressure squared upon pressure cube, that's one upon pressure. So one upon at most, it's like R, A goes to R. What's B? B is, oh, so at most, one of negative one upon. So Q, C goes to, it's nothing. There is no unit. Uh, this guy, look. This cancels, this cancels, you got two over there, so it must be about negative two. Yes. Third. Right. K 10 plus 7 degrees Celsius upon K 10 degrees Celsius. This thing is two. Then. Oh, okay. So this actually becomes twice. That means increasing temperature increases K. Right. That means it's endothermic. So A is endothermic. Uh, A is E. B, so it's 1 upon 2, it's, it's exothermic. So B is R. C, A plus B gives uh, C, it's, it's affected by pressure, of course, and this is uh, not affected by pressure. So like C is uh, S, and D is, D is uh, Q. All right, if I this is the next one on this page itself. Okay, fourth. But this was fourth. Where was third? Oh, the third was this. Thing. So this was actually fourth. Uh, right. Let's switch this. So for third, what, what's the thing? Uh. 2x gives y plus z. You want to find alpha for all? Oh god. No. Maybe we could just do like unit analysis because alpha is unitless and here kc is unitless and this is here kc is not unitless. So this is wrong and right something like that. Right, so wait a second, but there's only KC involved. KC is involved everywhere. How can that be? Because alpha is unitless. If it involves KC in there, it will always have a unit. That doesn't make sense. Oh, okay. Assuming initial moles of reactants, then uh, unit analysis goes to waste. Fine. So over here, just have alpha squared because yeah, uh, initial moles of reactant is 1. So, 
and alpha is very less than one. Okay, cool. So alpha squared upon because this doesn't change much, x doesn't change, so it's just alpha squared equal to kc. So this will be square root of yeah, right? Two moles of pain. What is it? If you got one alpha over there, then this will be alpha upon two and alpha. Okay, okay, this will make sense. Oh no. It's gonna be alpha squared upon four is uh, Kc. So alpha is two times root of Kc. So first goes to a uh, first goes to P. Okay. Second goes to so for second guy. Cool. Now we can do it. So it's finally the square of Kc. So it's gonna go plus. Right. It's just alpha squared plus alpha squared because one minus alpha alpha alpha. This would be one minus two x, or you could say two into one minus alpha. Sorry, no, one minus uh, alpha, this would be alpha upon two, so alpha upon That makes sense because we have two of that. Uh, right, this guy has one minus alpha. Okay, three of that goes to this. <sighs> one minus alpha, alpha upon three, alpha upon three. So alpha upon three squared is Kc. So alpha is three times square root of Kc. So it should go to Q. So C goes to. And what does D go to? Uh, oh, hey, it's, uh, it's, it's got this 2 over there. That's not good. So, once again, it's like 1 minus alpha. This guy has alpha upon 2. Yeah, this guy has alpha. So, alpha times alpha upon 2 is alpha square upon 2. That thing is Kc. No, wait, alpha upon 2 times alpha squared. Right. So, alpha cube upon 2. That is Kc. So alpha is cube root of 2 Kc. So this goes to R. D goes to R. Alright, cool. We got it. Should we do the fifth question as well? I think we should. So fifth. Pressure is increased in. So 2 NO gives N2 no. No change in like nothing changes. Equilibrium shift in property shift. In. Okay, so uh, A R B in B uh, delta N is positive, so pressure increase in this thing will uh, shift this to left side, so it will shift backward direction. So Q. Okay, temperature increase and pressure increased. Once again, pressure increase means it will go to. Uh, forward and temperature increases it's positive and touch so yeah it will still go to forward so it will shift in the forward direction p and d pressure decrease and moles of n2 increased moles of n2 increase can go to the forward direction oh god pressure decreased uh wait pressure decreased then it may go to reverse direction okay so yeah, in the we cannot predict. So yes, cool. And you know what? I'm not going to do a such a reason. Just not going to do it. I hate it actually. Okay, so there we go. Completion time and master column. So first, okay, master column. Uh, first. Okay, so for first is A to P. Then B to R, C to Q, and D to S. Right. Then R P, sorry, R Q P S. Exactly. Okay. Then P S Q R is this? Yes, that's correct. Then P R P R S Q. Okay. P R S. Yes, that's correct. Cool. Then comprehension type. First C. Okay. Wait, oh third is also correct. Wow. Uh why is there no fifth? Why didn't I do anything with fifth? Okay, so it's supposed to be D. Uh, uh okay. Maybe I just uh, whatever. Uh yeah. 
Oh, okay, fifth is not there. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, right, so fifth is not there. I was looking for this guy's fifth. And, sorry, this guy's fifth. There's no fifth in there. Okay, uh, C. A, C, D. A, C, D. Fourth is A. Fifth is D. Okay, I will have to see what this is. Uh, in D, you have B, D, C, and in E, you have A, B, B, A. Okay, so in E, it should be A. Let's see. Oh, come on. Where did it go? Uh, is, this is comprehension type, I think. In, uh, in E, it should be in e the fourth uh, one should be a so it's negative 13.31 huh? in time for the reverse reaction come on ah right so for the entire forward reaction it was something positive then it should have been negative but it actually didn't get what like why was this the thing ah, okay let's do it once again so e so what do you know? You know that natural log of a. You know natural log a. We do delta x upon r times t. Sorry, one upon t. So natural log of k two upon k one. Uh, four upon one. Equal to negative delta x upon r into one upon t two. So one upon forty seven degrees Celsius is like three hundred twenty minus one upon 300, which is of course just delta right. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be 20 upon approximately 300 square, which is delta h upon r into uh, 2 upon 2 upon 9000. Right. So delta H is 9000 R upon 2 and that times natural log of 4 which is just 2 natural log of 2 so you can get this crossed out and 9 and what you want in, in kilo calorie per calorie per mole man I should have done that already so 9000 times 2 calorie per mole <laughs> uh, that times natural log of 2 uh, R is actually like R is actually a uh, calorie per mole Kelvin, but yeah, with this temperature and stuff, it works. So natural log two is like zero point seven approximately, and you want in kilo calorie per mole, so get rid of this thing. So it should be what six point three times two, which is you guessed it like five point six. So yeah, thirteen point three looks close enough. So for the forward reaction, it's thirteen point three one. For the backward reaction, it's negative thirteen point three one. So yeah, fourth A is correct. Wow, I made two mistakes in that. Can you believe that? Okay, that's that's that. And C is a. Uh, I didn't understand the games very well. Oh, I'm going back. Uh, C is here. So, third and fourth, D and E are correct. Okay, E is about 40%. So, if D is correct, then why not B? Because, so it, if it absorbs moisture about 40%, right? Okay, if it absorbs moisture above forty percent, then below forty percent it will uh, give moisture. No, wait, sorry. Yeah, so above forty percent it will absorb moisture because surrounding is wet, so it will absorb it. Okay, and then below forty percent humidity, it will give its own wetness to the surrounding. So. Okay, if 50% is gonna work, third, D, and fourth, 
Oh wait, sorry. So fourth is A. Uh, okay, it's about fifty percent. It will. Hmm. And okay, how is this fifty percent? So Na two SO four. That thing is. Is it Na two SO four? Right. So for this Kp is that. So for the backward reaction, Kp will be. Okay, don't don't worry about that. The whole thing is just that H two O to the power of ten. That is this guy. So H two O. I mean the pressure of H two O. That will be ten power negative two. And the pressure is fifteen point two torr. So ten power negative two atmosphere, right? Or is it just ten power negative two in plane? No, no, that can't be. So I think ten power negative two is. Like in atmosphere, that would be probably like a thousand torr or something. Is like a torr a unit for millimeter hg maybe? So if that was the case, then one one atmosphere that's like that, that's is seven sixty seventy seven sixty millimeter hg. So then is this seven sixty torr? Okay, I don't know about that. These unconventional units. Why do these? Will do that. Okay, seven sixty times. Uh, what was the thing? Can point eight two. This would be seven point six, and that's not seven point six a point in percentage, right? So remove that. <coughs> approximately fifteen, right? What was the thing? Fifteen point two. So it's approximately fifteen. Fifteen point whatever. Um. Yeah, that times five. So this times five, that would be seventy-six. Oh God! Yeah. So one tor is like one millimeter hg. Now I understand this. I thought one tor was. Then what was that that I was thinking about? I don't know. I don't know. I learned it the hard way. Yeah, one tor is one millimeter hg. Stupid of me. Okay. Okay, now I know. So, right, it was fifty percent. Fine. So I'll see you guys in the next video.